Devin Graves coming to you at long last once again from Studio D. And today I'm here to talk to you about the psychotic waltz and what really seems like the end. At least the end of touring. A couple of months back, our manager made a press release announcing the ending of all touring for Psychotic Waltz. And up until now, I've never really had any comment about that on my own. Um, and I really wanted to say something from my side. Back in 2000, at the end of the recording of The God-Shaped Void, we went on a small tour in Europe. Also, uh, we played Prog Power USA in Atlanta, Georgia, which, by the way, was one of the best experiences of my life, easily up there with the fantastic Greek audiences. Uh, the audiences in Greece are by far the most grateful audiences uh, I've ever performed in front of just really, really emotional and just always a breathtaking experience to play for the Greek crowd. Well, Prague Power USA is right up there with them. It was really an amazing experience and in many ways was over the top excellent just because of the way the whole thing went. Um... Unfortunately, I had been singing so much, recording so much, and uh, going out on those tours, my voice actually failed me. I crashed and burned on those tours, those, those few concerts. It was really heartbreaking. It was really embarrassing. Um, I had a few moments that I'm really proud of, but I had some moments that really, really, really broke my heart. And I'm sure we're very painful to watch. And my voice just gave up. And at the same time, Brian was playing with carpal tunnel syndrome. He had developed it from the years of manual use of his wheelchair. And it, carpal tunnel syndrome just devastated his playing. He played really, really well uh, on the God-shaped void. Some of his best playing is on that record. But when playing live, you know, you, he would never know when that's going to creep up on him and just paralyze his hand. And so th there were a couple of solos where he just kind of had to stop and just sit there. And because his hand was just, couldn't even move, just, just paralyzed with pain. And, well, anybody that's had carpal tunnel syndrome might know what that's like. Anyway, between him going through that and me going through the situation with my voice, um, we didn't feel like we were the psychotic walls of legend. And we were really looking forward to coming back and redeeming ourselves. At least that was how I felt. So we came back from these uh, small engagements and I sent the album off to Jens Burgen to be, to be mixed then the the record comes out it's received beyond our expectations we even hit the charts in several countries that we've never hit the charts before and we were looking forward to touring for this record however brian needed to get a surgery for his arm and i needed to retrain my voice I'm going to make a separate video on that whole issue that I had with my voice, why I had it, and how I built myself back from it, because I think that it could really save other singers from going through the same thing. But then, shortly after the album release, uh, COVID hits, and all the lockdowns hit, and all of the concerts are canceled. Which actually at first wasn't so bad because Brian still needed to get into the hospital for his surgery and um, all the hospitals were closing and it was really difficult for him to actually get in there and get it done, which eventually he did. And I also um, 
took some training and advice from a vocal coach and uh, learned how to rebuild my voice. I'm really looking forward to talking to you about that. And then it was, okay, we're going to come out and we're going we're gonna to do this right. The concerts got pushed back to the following year because of COVID, and then a year again. And finally, they got pushed to 2023, which is where we stand now. And actually, they were scheduled to be in the spring of 2023. If things had gone to plan, we would be getting ready to come out right about this month. I'm recording this in May, the early part of May in 2023 and that's about when we were supposed to come out we're going to play greece and budapest and and wherever else a few months <clears throat> ago brian wrote to us all on email and said that he can't tour anymore and it has nothing to do with his arm his arm is fine his guitar playing is back my voice is back <laughs> but touring for brian is really a health risk it always has been. Back in his 20s, it was a health risk. Um, things like pressure sores and all types of ailments come from living on the road the way we live. We're not a rich band that gets to fly in private jets and luxury nightliners and things like that. We're sitting in vans, going from city to city, hours in vans, cold after a gig, uh, maybe get to a hotel, sleep for a couple of hours, then back in the van we get. Sound check, backstage, concert, van, <clears throat> hotel, rinse and repeat. And when this was like really bad for his health in his 20s, uh, actually this is why he quit the band after we did Bleeding, because he couldn't tour then. He was in his early 30s, and he was like, man, I can't do that. I can't do it anymore. It just tears me apart. And now we're in our 50s, and he's facing it, saying, man, if I do it now, it's probably going to cost me my life, and it's not worth it. And he suggested we get Steve Cox, once again, the guy that replaced him for the Bleeding Tour, and we had his blessing to do so. I would have done it, I guess. Um, I mean, I would have done it because I want to play. I really wanted to play. But in the end, uh, especially Dan, he, he couldn't see going on the road without Brian. And once Dad, Dan mentioned that, I, I kind of agreed myself. And we all agreed just to stand by Brian and say, hey, man, where we go, we go one, we go all. And if Brian's not with us, then then it's not Psychotic Waltz anymore. So we decided, okay, we're going to cancel all the tours. And to be honest, that really broke my heart. It, it, it really crushed me, and I went into a really long period of depression. I had, part of the reason was, like, I, I built this studio up to heights that I never imagined. It's It's... It's an amazing place here, and it's. I was really looking forward to recording more Psychotic Waltz stuff, which I guess, in theory, we're supposed to still do. But after going through this depression, I finally decided to pick myself up and say, okay, i got to just make some music. I'll make some solo music. I'll, I'll do um, a new solo record. And maybe I can make music that I hadn't been able to bring into Psychotic Waltz or you know, or any other band for that matter. Music of a different style. Um, and so I did, I started working on this music, and the first thing I did is I revisited this song I had written in my head. It's been in there bouncing around for about 10 years, and often some of the very best songs I've ever written come about that way. I either A, you can write by just jamming on guitar until you find a, a, a riff you like and build it from that, or you can, <clears throat> like, like I do with Psychotic Waltz, I get music from them and then I just craft a melody over it and craft lyrics over that. Or sometimes you start with a drum groove and then just start, you get a drum groove that you like and like I want a song that sounds like with this kind of energy and then you build a riff around that. Um, I, I write in all those ways, but the very best songs 
in my opinion and in the opinion <clears throat> evidently of many people turn out to be these ones that just turn on like a radio in my head i remember it was a song like that um there are there are several others but this is one also but i couldn't find lyrics for this song that was the reason why i never developed it earlier is i just couldn't find the right lyrics so I dug this song out. I actually had several other songs already written. I, I have them. They're even written and recorded. And then I started to think, what if this new music was a new Dead Soul Tribe album? Because it's so different. It, you know, Dead Soul Tribe had a certain sound. And um, I was even criticized for not breaking out of that. Uh, until the last album, Lullaby for the Devil, I broke out of the sonic uh, signature that I was trying to create. And I thought, what would it be like if I make a record that's completely different? Like, doesn't even sound like, not only doesn't sound like Dead Soul Tribe, but doesn't even sound like metal, you know? Like just some, I guess, world-class music, something more like, I don't know, you know, Pink Floyd, Peter Gabriel, something bigger and broader. And what if I made a new Dead Soul Tribe album that just shocked everybody with the direction it went? And so I called up Adele and asked if he was interested. And of course, he's like, yes, he, he was, in his life, uh, he really needs this too. And um, so he came out and I, I played him the song. I didn't even let him hear it through. I just kind of played it and you know his drums are are sitting right back there they're all mic'd up and ready to go at, at all times and so he could sit down there and I just hit record and and he played he played it through and um if I remember he just played it through one time and it was like perfect perfect and um he played through a couple of other tunes as well and it was just fantastic, just fantastic. And so he ends up going home. I, I, should, I should back up. And the other songs I told you I had written recently and recorded, I showed them to him. And he really liked them. And I knew these songs wouldn't be good psychotic waltz songs. I, they, they would have been rejected for sure. Um, stylistically, they just not for psychotic waltz. Or if they were, they would change them so much that they wouldn't be these songs anymore. And um, I really wanted to do something different. And Adele heard these songs and was just like, wow, that's really good stuff. That's really good stuff. And I asked him, do you think that would make a good Dead Soul Tribe album? And he's like, yeah, let's do it. So he goes home. And then I listened to this one song that I... I had written the acoustic guitar for. And <clears throat> so he was playing along with acoustic guitar and bass. Nothing else. And and then when I listened to it, I, I, I realized, okay, he didn't really play what I wanted exactly because I notice now that it's not really lining up with the bass part. And so I sit behind the drums on my own and I thought, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll play it myself because it's not like a complicated song. I'll play it myself, and then I'll like demonstrate how how it should go, where the accent should be, let's say. And um, I couldn't, <laughs> you know, there, there was no. I tried and tried, and there was no sense in me replacing Adele's part with my drumming. Um, <clears throat> so I went back to his version, and I thought, okay, I'll replay the bass, and I played the bass to his drumming, and boom, the song just clicked. It just clicked. And then I added guitar parts, a clean uh, electric guitar in, in the same thinking as like, let's make this com something completely different from whatever I've done before, whatever we've done before. And I, the lyrics just came pouring through and I laid this song out exactly as I had imagined it sonically, uh, but with the electric guitars bringing it someplace even newer, someplace I wasn't expecting. And 
once I finished this song, I was just so in love with it. Like I would be in tears listening to it and just like in such ecstasy. I, I sent the song to Adele. He loved it. And we're like, yeah, this is what we're going to do. And I have plans to have Adele come back, obviously. And once I kind of realized that this has gone full circle, almost like it's really for me, full circle is more like a figure eight because we have the full circle of psychotic walls and then the full circle of dead soul tribe. And I called this studio when it was in another location. I called it Dead Soul Temple. You see it on all the records recorded at the Dead Soul Temple. And now I realized, man, this is the new Dead Soul Temple. There's equipment in here that I never had before. This studio is set up in a way that I had never had before. And Adele's drum set, as I showed you, is right behind me, permanently mic'd. And it's like I have now this experience as a recording engineer that I had never had back then. I have equipment that I never had. We're set up to make sonically the best thing I've ever done in my life. Artistically, something unlike anything we've ever done together. And now, at this point, I'm really, really happy about the fact that I can announce to you that Dead Soul Tribe is going to be back. Is back. It's going to be a new version. We're going to jam with a different bass player because Roland can't join us. Um, <clears throat> also, I wanted to take different types of players for different type for a, a different type of music. Um, and I was considering for when we play live to have two guitar players and I will just sing up front. When I was playing with Dead Soul Tribe in the past, it was one of my fantasies to play lead guitar. You know, everyone knows I love Hendrix and I had set my guitar down to be in psychotic waltz and part of what i wanted to do in my solo work was to play guitar again and i have done that uh, but the one thing that i found is is that playing live i felt really constrained because i had to play guitar and sit at the microphone and so i can't just grab the microphone and walk around i have to stay in one spot my pedal board is down at my feet, and the only time I can really stretch out and perform is when I was playing solos. And <clears throat> when I got back in Psychotic Waltz again, I realized that freedom of just having a microphone and not having to worry about guitar, pedal boards, any of that stuff, just singing. And as I was so looking forward to doing that with Psychotic Waltz, now I think I'll do it this way with Dead Soul Tribe. I'm not sure, but this is my idea. When I make the records, it's going to be just as they always have been. It's just going to be Adele and myself. Perhaps this bass player named Polly may be on the records as well. I'm not sure, but we're going to try jamming as a three-piece here. In a couple of days, I'm going to invite Adele and Polly over and... <clears throat> I'll play guitar, of course, you know, in the writing stages. And maybe I'll, maybe I'll play some live too. But it's going to be a new Dead Soul Tribe. It's going to be a new sound. And I'm really, really looking forward to it. I would love to play you Eric Clayton's reaction to this song. It's very satisfying. Um, I'll keep him to his privacy. To say it simply is he was really, really praising the song, the sound of it, the music. He just gave me a very, very, very satisfying reaction. So I'm really looking forward to this. The sad news is that Psychotic Waltz is not going to tour anymore. As you know, theoretically, we're going to make more records, but I'm waiting for music to come from them. 
And while I'm waiting, I'm not just going to sit here and get older. I'm going to make a new record and kind of take the power back into my own hands and hopefully bring you the best Dead Soul Tribe album yet. So I'll keep you posted. I'll keep coming out with some new videos and I'll see you on the next one. Hey, brother. I'm so sorry it took me nearly five days to finally have time to listen to that. But fuck, man. Wow. I don't even know what else to say right now. That's so good, man. I, we're sitting here, just both of us got chills a few times, man. Just beautiful, man. What a fucking song. I hope it was okay that I was listening to that, too. Yeah. It's, it's, it's wow. It's brilliant. Brother, man. It's so good. Uh, so good, brother. Keep going. Yes. In the direction you're going, man. Absolutely. You're on to a masterpiece. Uh-huh. Love you, my friend. Thank you for sharing.